Hi FlossTube! Welcome to my channel. My name is Jill and you can find me here on FlossTube and over on Instagram at cjillstitch. Um, it's been a little while. <laughs> I think my last video was April 30th, so it's September 6th now. Um, it's been a little while. It's a crazy, crazy summer, um, but I think I am recovered <laughs> mostly, fingers crossed. Um, from the busyness and I am ready to jump back in and start doing floss tubes again. I um, have a lot to show. Um, I had moments this summer where I didn't get any stitching done at all um, and then other times where I got quite a bit done. So um, just a little life update I guess. Um, we had let's see since April 30th my goodness okay so my oldest daughter graduated from high school which was super exciting um, we're very proud of her um, and we took a couple vacations um, we went on a cruise in the Caribbean um, the same week that Hurricane Barrel was in the Caribbean so that was interesting <laughs> We had fun. We were never anywhere near the hurricane. We had beautiful weather the whole time. Well, I say beautiful. It was really hot and it was really humid. Um, but it wasn't like hurricane weather. So we'll say it was beautiful. Um, but we did have a couple of our port stops get canceled. <laughs> so uh, we were supposed to go to Jamaica, Grand Cayman, and Cozumel. And instead we went to Jamaica and the Bahamas. So it was still fun. We had lots of um, family time and made a lot of memories, did some fun things, so it was great. <clears throat> and then we also went on a just like a quick short trip to a family reunion um, in Utah. And we went to my niece's wedding in Oregon and that was beautiful. And after the wedding we got to spend a couple days um, just kind of playing on the beach in Oregon and it was lovely. That weather was beautiful. <laughs> it's wonderful. It rained a little bit, but not very much. It was cool. It was like the antidote to Las Vegas summers. So very nice. Um, we also, we did a lot of dance. Well, not all of us. My kids did a lot of dancing because I have two girls who dance competitively. Um, so we had like our national dance competition in the middle of the summer and um, and then last week I took my oldest daughter up to college. She is going to BYU so um, that was hard <laughs> but it was it was exciting. I'm really excited for her and all of the things that she's gonna do. So um, anyway that was what happened this summer and I'm just now catching my breath. <laughs> so um, the kids are all back in school. We're doing good. So yeah, um, so I'm just gonna, I guess I'm just gonna jump into stitching. Oh, I have one finish. Oh, I should probably say I was doing whip go earlier this year and that kind of went out the window. Um, it was fun for a while. I'd never done it before. And I started in January and it was good. I think I've gotten three projects finished just from doing whip go. So that was awesome. Um, and then the summer just got busy and I kind of forgot about it and I just decided not to pick it up again. I'm just going to keep doing what I want to do. So anyway, but that reminded me of it because my finish that I have to show you is um, I finished it from Whipco. So this is, sorry, I'm getting the fluffies out of it. Um, this is Star Spangled Street from um, Primrose Cottage. Let me get it right up there. I just love stitching the little houses. It was so fun. I think when I picked it up, <clears throat> I think I was about halfway through this white house. Like I think I had the white done, but not any of the other colors, not the roof or the windows or the door. So I finished that up and then I did this blue house and the tree and then I had to do the grass along the bottom. So, but I had a goal on my whip go to finish this and I did. So that worked out really good and it's cute and I should have um, FFO'd it before <laughs> like the 4th of July before all the patriotic holidays and I didn't so because again crazy summer but it'll be done hopefully before next summer so 
Um, and that is my only finish. I do have some new stars, <laughs> but only one finish. This is not a problem. I don't see this as being a problem. So um, I think I have 12 whips. So this is almost like a whip parade, but not quite. Um, and they're all down on the floor because they didn't fit on my table. So, excuse me. <laughs> Let me grab a few. Ah, it'll fall out of my chair. Okay. Oh man, some of these are going back quite a ways. Let me start with this one because I'm pretty sure this was my first thing that I worked on after my last video. Um, I had a birthday start. My birthday is in April and I, I, um, I started, let me find the picture of it here. I started this piece. Why is it all stuck? Really, why is it stuck? What's going on here? Okay, I, I started this piece. Um, it's a kit from Perman of Copenhagen. It's called Roses and Fuchsia. And I, I just had a little tiny start right down in these pink flowers. So I picked it up again and worked on it. Let me move my thingies off of it. And I got this flower on it. Ooh, we've got light coming through the back. Uh, I was really happy with the progress I made on this. So I started, um, it was actually down here. It's right under the Q-snap, but it's just a little bit. I think is where I started, right down in here somewhere. So I moved up and did the rest of the rows and the leaf and started in on this fuchsia. I feel like it was some really good progress. Um, and I didn't even work on it for a super long time. Maybe, I wanna say less than a week I worked on it, so. Um, I love this pattern. It's beautiful. I haven't picked it up since the last time I worked on it. Well, that's a stupid thing to say. I haven't worked on it since the last time I worked on it. <laughs> I haven't worked on it since, like, May when I picked it up and, and started doing it again. Um, and I should say on a lot of these, I probably won't work on them again for a few months because we're getting into fall. Doesn't feel like it here in Vegas. It's, I think today's high is supposed to be 105, but I'm pretending that it's fall and I'm pulling out all my seasonal stitching. So I probably won't work on a lot of these until um, the new year, which is fine. Okay. Then I also pulled out my, this is a Lila Studio, Lila Studio piece called Let Freedom Ring. And it's a biggie. I'm not done. I'm not anywhere close to done. This is what it looks like so far. And when I picked it up, I believe I did this flag. That flag was really fun to do. <laughs> and the birds up above it. And then I came over to this side and started working on this big floral motif. It matches the one on the other side. So I started doing that. And that's what I've done this year on it. So yeah, <laughs> I was thinking I did something else, but I didn't. Um, oh, it's so pretty. I cannot wait for this one to be fun or to be fun. I cannot wait for it to be done because it's fun, I'm just really enjoying it. Um, except there's a ton of bag stitching in it. I'm not looking forward to that. I really should have um, done it as I went along. Oh, this is what it's gonna look like when it's finished. That The um, Independence Hall has a lot of bag stitching on it. So I am not looking forward to that. Bag stitching is not my favorite thing, but I will do it. I don't enjoy doing it, but I love the way it looks once it's done. So I will bite the bullet and keep going. Every year I think maybe I'll have this done by next year on the 4th of July. And it never is. <laughs> Working on it for 
years and it's still not finished but I feel like the the building is like the biggest part and the, those big flower things on the sides and so I'm getting the big stuff done okay next I have just a little one this is probably the smallest thing I'm working on so it's dumb that it's taken me as long I'm not very far on it um, this is goat load from Plum Street Samplers. It's cute little goats. I'm going to make it into a pillow and give it to my sister. And oh, I've got a thread on it. Get this out of the way. This is what I have finished on it. Two goats. There's the legs of a third. Um, I really don't work on this very often. I keep it up here in my craft room. And I just kind of pick it up. <laughs> I pick it up when my youngest daughter is in the shower because she likes me to comb her hair after she showers. And her bathroom is right by my craft room. So I come in here and stitch on this while I'm waiting for her to get out of the shower. So I work on it in like seven minute increments. So it's about how long she showers. And then I brush her hair and we go on with our lives. So very small but it's gonna take forever if that's the only time I work on it but that's okay oh let me grab a couple more things I put in some more time on my um, summer Quaker Whoops, this is also Lila Studios probably seen it everybody is working on it that's what it looks like and I Oh, you can't really see what I've done because I just moved the hoop. Let me, or the Q-snap. Let me take a side off here. Okay, when I picked it up, I, where was I? I was like partway through this motif. That's where I stopped working on it last year. So I finished the motif and just worked all the way over to here, which is almost the whole bottom of it. I don't know why I stopped working on it in the middle of a lobster. Is that a lobster? Yes. I probably got interrupted and then I got put away. Anyway, <laughs> I love the way this one's looking. This is how much I have done on it. So I'm over halfway through, yeah, a little over halfway through at the outer border. Oh, oh, I'm not saying what any of these are stitched on. I apologize for that. Um, I don't remember what a couple of them are stitched on. Um, well, the Roses and Fuchsia was a kit. Oh, although I'm not using fabric from the kit. It's just a black Lugana. And the Goat Load is on Desert Taipan, maybe? And um, my Let Freedom Ring, I think it's just on like a platinum. I think it's platinum. And this one is, um, it's a secret. I <laughs> don't know what it is. Let's see. Oh, the tag is still on it. This is um, Color and Cotton's Over the Moon. It's just. It looks gray. It's a really light blue. Let me see if it's it show up better. It's a light blue. So a really pretty light blue. I really like it. So alrighty. I'm actually getting through this faster than I thought I might. So that's good news. Let's see. Okay. I also pulled out, oh, I bent the pages, um, oh, what's it called, Opus One from Long Dog Samplers. I was working on this, well, actually, here's the story. I almost gave up on this cross stitch once, just wasn't feeling it. Decided to pick it up and work on it some more. And I was doing like one strand a day on it. Um, I just pull it out and work on it in the morning while my kids are getting ready for school. So I get them up and get them going and help make their lunches 
and then I can sit and stitch while they do whatever before we leave for school. So I put it away at the beginning of the summer because my kids weren't in school. So they started like three weeks ago, so I pulled it out again. Maybe it was four weeks ago. Anyway, I pulled it out to um, work on it somewhere. And I'm not going to take it out of the hoop, but this is where it is. Um, since I picked it up, I've been doing this big motif <laughs> for like, this, I think we're in the fourth week of school, but I was gone all of last week, so I didn't work on it then. So it's like three weeks worth of work. Well, when you get close and like the colors don't look good. It's like this really pretty pink and cream. Anyway, um, this is a big motif and I'm kind of getting tired of it, but we're gonna stick it out <laughs> and finish it. Some days I actually get more than one length in. Um, if if the kids are extra helpful and get stuff done sooner, I can sometimes get two in. Um, and if my husband is home, he will drive the kids to school and then I pick them up. And so I'll sometimes put in like two or three lengths because I don't have to actually take them to school. Anyway, I would really like to have this done um, by the end of the year but I don't know if that's gonna happen. So this is the motif I'm working on right now. There's a couple small ones underneath it that won't take too long, but then there's this band along the bottom. That's really about all that I have left, but the band is, um, well, it's fairly big. So we'll see how fast I can get through it. Um, I could make it like a focus piece to get it done better, faster, uh, but, but it's fall and I want to do the fall stitching. So we'll see what happens. It'll definitely be done before the end of the school year. Um, and then I can start another one. Yay. Okay. Um, oh, okay. Here's the story. Saga. It's the whole saga. I'm working on the Long Dog Sampler Saga. This was my, um, what was it called? Leap Year Long Dog. Long Dog Leap Year something. I started it basically on Leap Day. Um, oh my gosh, I got like threads. <laughs> With the intent of finishing it, in four years on leap day. And I I had it like all figured out. I was like, this is a 20 page pattern. So four years, 20 pages is five pages a year, which is a page like every two and a half months-ish. I've been looking for a picture, that's what it looks like. So I was cruising along, feeling really good about it. I actually decided um, to pick it up and work on it and get a little bit ahead so that when this fall came and I wanted to do like seasonal stitching, I wouldn't have to do as much on the, on the long dog. And I was feeling really great. And then I was working on it one day and I realized it is a 25 page pattern. I don't know, I don't know how <laughs> I missed the last five pages of the pattern when I was looking at it, but it is not a 20 page pattern, it is a 25 page pattern. Which means that instead of doing five pages a year, I would have to do six pages a year, which is a page, six plus like six and a quarter pages a year which is essentially like a page every two months instead of a page every two and a half. It doesn't seem like that much of a difference. Um, but I kind of like took the wind out of my sails. I don't know. I, I was working on Saga thinking I'm going to get, I'm a little bit ahead. I won't have as much to do at the end of the year. And then I realized, well, no, if I have to do six pages a year, I'm actually behind. I was just really bummed, you guys. 
Um, I just felt a little bit deflated about the whole thing. So um, I don't think I'm going to make this a long dog or a long dog uh, leap year thing anymore. I absolutely am still going to finish it. I love this pattern. It's going to be so fun to stitch. It is so fun to stitch and it's going to, I think, look amazing when it's done. Um, but I'm not going to put the pressure on myself to try to finish it that quick because I could but it would be like the only thing I worked on and I have a million other things that I want to stitch so I'm just going to take the pressure off of myself and say I'm not going to try to have it done in four years it's going to take like probably six or seven which is fine it's a huge project and it's it's a saga so that's my whole story um this is how far I am on my saga <laughs> Wah. I'm working down one side. It's kind of hard to see. I'm using a variegated floss. Um, part of me doesn't love using variegated flosses for long dogs because they're so busy anyway um, that it's almost too chaotic. But I just wanted to for fun on this one because I'm kind of playing with colors. So you can see, especially variegated, like these lighter colors, they are harder to see. Um, I will say it's easier to see in person than it is on camera. But I've got kind of a yellow green up in the first row of arches and then kind of a green blue in the middle. And then down here, this is more blue than green. And then I have two colors. There's, there's gonna be, there's like five rows of arches so the next one down is a darker blue and then the bottom one is like a really not really dark blue but it's a darker blue so sorry I'm moving it around a lot that's what it looks like that's what I've been working on it's beautiful I love long dogs forever will I love them she just came out with a new one today too oh hi kitty Oh, let's, let's, let's turn around. Let's be polite. <laughs> Give a little cameo today. Um, yeah, they just came out with a new long dog today. I think it's called Gates of Hell. <laughs> and it looks awesome. So, just one more thing to add to my list. This is an ever-growing list. Okay. Um, oh, let me grab this one. I also, um, just kind of on a whim, I don't have any specific reason to do it. I pulled out Golden Delicious from the Artsy Housewife. I started this one in um, December of last year. It was one of my 12 days of Christmas starts. And I only worked on it for a teeny bit of time trying to remember if I have a picture of where I was when I picked it up. I don't think I do. I don't remember though. Anyway, it doesn't matter. I'll just show you where I am now. I'm gonna move my thread out of the way. This is where I am. Let's see if I have something to put behind it. Whoops. I got a lot finished on it. I, oh, shoot, I'm trying to remember. I think I, I just had this little tiny bit done up here. So I did all of the flowers and then I'm going back and filling them in. I'm just kind of, my cat is totally eating a piece of paper on the floor. Psst, Petra, don't eat paper. I can't believe I have to say this. I'm just kind of going through one color at a time and like working my way down, filling in everything with that color. This is actually not as wide as it is. There's two more of these flower motifs over here. Um, I just didn't want to move the Q-snap. So I will do everything in the Q-snap and then move it over and do the last two. And then I just have the middle left. 
I'm almost done, right? Practically finished. So close. <laughs> okay, I also, um, I got, I think it was right after I put Summer Quaker away. I was kind of tired of working on that one. And I was just itching to start something new. I really wanted a new start. Um, so I was looking through all of my patterns, trying to decide what I wanted to work on. Um, and I had it narrowed down to like eight things <laughs> that I really wanted to start. Um, and I didn't have all the stuff for any of them. So I ordered some um, fabric that I wanted for a couple of them and the floss that I wanted for a couple of them and started one of them. Oh no, I I, well, I started two of them. Um, the first one was just a, this is my smallest start. I don't have very much done on it, but this is a Carolyn Manning pattern. I just, ever just get like a hankering to start a Carolyn Manning? I just wanted to start one. I've never done one of hers before and it looked like fun. So, um, this one is called Deep Water, Deep Ocean. I think it's deep ocean. And I thought it would be a fun one to start. Let me show you. On it. I thought it would be a fun one to start on our cruise because I wanted to bring something on the cruise. But I didn't want something like I knew the lighting wasn't going to be great if I was in a, a room. So I wanted something with a fairly big count on it. Um, so this is actually an Ada, which I haven't worked on for quite a while and I'm enjoying it. And I just wanted like blocks of color and fun stuff. So there it is. Um, this fabric is from, um, what's it from? Vintage Needle Arts. I think this is an 18 count Ada. And I actually think I'm probably, oops, I'm probably working on the back of it because I like the way the back looked more than the front. I don't know if you can really, I just kind of wanted the more muted colors. So um, so I picked that up. It's a really small start. I didn't stitch very much on the cruise. I had a feeling I wouldn't. Um, and then I also took it up to Oregon for the wedding we went to and did like one more day on it. So not very much, but look at these colors. Oops. Aren't they so pretty? I love them. They're gorgeous. Greens and blues. I don't have a picture of what the pattern will look like when it's finished because it's. I just have like a PDF of it. So it will be a surprise. Um, but that was actually the second thing I started in my itching to start all the things. The first one um, was a Nemo pattern. I decided to start this one just because I had most of the stuff for it. <laughs> I was just missing a few DMCs. Let me see if I can pull it out of the plastic without, without being too noisy. How do you open this? I love this pattern so much. It's called Fairy Cat what it looks like. So cute. Um, with my, the last Nemo pattern I did was my Baba Yaga and I got a little bored with that one because it was a lot of gray and a lot of confetti and there was a part of me that was afraid I might get tired of this one because it's like a lot of brown and a lot of confetti. Brown and orange. But I never got tired of this. I loved stitching on it like every minute of it it is almost 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 to finish you guys let me move my what's going on here oh i have a, a thread sticking out okay but look look how close i am it's even better in person i love this so much it was so fun to stitch too. Um, I don't usually like confetti, but it wasn't, 
It was like bigger chunks, lots of colors. They were spread out all over, but it wasn't just like a one here and one here and one here. So this was my first time doing um, a face over one. I don't know if I can get in close enough for you to see that face. It was, it was not hard. I mean, I did it, I had to do it during the day when the lighting was really good and use my like highest strength of reading glasses, but it was not, it was not bad. So I have um, like half the back stitching done. I think the back stitching on the cat is finished, um, except, so, so let me, the pattern calls for um, like a fuzzy, a fuzzy thread. I'm gonna use this whisper. You can see how fuzzy it is. Um, you do it like in the cat's ears and on the tip of the cat's tail. And it also has you do it for the whiskers, but I don't love the way that looks because cats don't have fuzzy whiskers. Like <laughs> that's not the fuzzy part of the cat. Um, so I'm just gonna do probably this same um, piece. Why is it? Anyway, um, just regular DMC for the whiskers. And then I have to backstitch the fairy. I've done her wings and her hair. But I think there's a little bit of backstitching around her legs and body and then her face. Um, and I'm kind of gonna play around with the back stitching on the face because I almost feel like one strand of DMC is gonna be a little bit thick for her face. Um, like it shows a close up, let me see if I can show this without showing the whole pattern. It shows a close up of the back stitching on her face. Oh, you also do the fuzzy, like she has little flowers in her hair. Anyway, sorry, I'm kind of showing the pattern. I don't know, it doesn't look like it. I'm just gonna play with it. Um, if it feels too thick, I will see if I can do it with like a, a thinner silk maybe. Anyway, um, and then let me pull, I put it back in the plastic, but you can see that there's like stitching under the cat. And in the pattern, it calls for like a mohair. Um, I don't love that. I don't, I don't know. I don't need the cat to look like it's on the carpet. <laughs> so I'm just going to kind of color match with the DMC. I almost don't want to do it just because I'm so close to being done, but it kind of just looks like the cat is floating. So I need to kind of ground it. So I will put something down here. I just haven't done it yet because I don't want to move the hoop till I'm done with all the back stitching. So finish the back stitching. I think it may even just be a tent stitch under the cat, maybe not. Either way, it's gonna be easy. Um, and then it has, the cat has a little bell. It's blue in the picture, but it's like an actual bell, like a 3D thing. And I need to find a little bell to put there. I don't love the blue though. I think it's kind of, kind of weird. So I might just do silver or brass or something, but anyway, it's almost done and I love it so much. I love Nemo patterns so much. They're just the best. And this one I just could not put down. Um, <laughs> well, I couldn't put it down when I was stitching on it. Now that I'm doing the back stitching, I can put it down. Um, I do want to finish it though, so I will pick it up again. I just kind of got distracted with, um, fall stitching but that pattern just all by itself cured my need for starting things like I had just started this and I was like okay I'm good now let me you back kitties okay <laughs> getting a little distracted here and my pattern or my piles are starting to fall okay I have three more and they're all fall stitching chairs. So the first one was just a little bit of progress. This is Autumn Town from Autumn Lane Stitchery. 
I love this pattern. I say that about all of them, I know. Um, this is where I am on it. And all I have done is, I was about halfway through this red tree. So I finished the red and then I started on this, this tree right here. So not a lot. Um, I kind of just pulled out all of my fall patterns and had them sitting in a pile in my craft room. And my sister called me and um, I knew it was gonna be a long phone conversation. So I just picked it up and started working on it while she was talking on the phone um, and finished the red. And then I think I, I worked on it for maybe one or two days, just working on the brown. Um, this is so much fun to stitch on, those variegated flosses. These right here are Gloriana's and they are just so beautiful, so beautiful. And they, they're just a joy to stitch with because they're silk and it's lovely. So little start on that. I'm hoping to make more progress on it this fall. Then I started a sal. I try not to do those anymore because it's always just to start along and I never actually um, finish them, <laughs> at least not with the rest of the group. Um, but this was just really cute, so I decided to do it. Um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch was doing a sell for their new Halloween pattern. I think it's called the Witchy Way pattern. And I think the hashtag is Witchy Way Sal. I hope that's right. Anyway, it's just like a cute little like street, like all the different shops on the street. So I the first part of the pattern released in July and then part two came out in August and part three I think comes out in the middle of September. So this is where I am. It's just a little start. This is going to be the Bat Tavern. It looks super pastel right now. Um, these are the colors. It are It is kind of pastel-y. But there are like some oranges and darker purples and blues. Oh, this is a little ghost floss drop that I got with the pattern. And also this cute little needle minder. Caterpillar Cross Stitch has the best needle minders and it glows in the dark. That's a bonus. Anyway, there will be more orange and dark purple and stuff in the pattern, but it does look very <laughs> like pastel-y right now. Um, Oh, I've been forgetting to say what I'm stitching everything on again. This is on an Atomic Ranch fabric. Storm, I think is what it is. It's super soft and I love it. So, and I'm doing it in my Disney Villains bag. I picked this, I made this and I picked it entirely because it has Yzma in it. She is my favorite Disney villain and she is underrepresented in my opinion, that whole movie is underrepresented, The Emperor's New Group. So anyway, <laughs> that's my witchy way, Sal. And then my last, um, my last piece that I've been working on. Oh, I'm so excited about this. I have made so much progress on it. This is The Gather In from Plum Street Samplers. That's what it looks like. I'm gonna have to take it out of the hoop for you to see where I am. This is where I am on it. When I picked it up, I had the roof done and those stars coming out of the chimney and I had most of this quilted star done and I had the white on the house down to about here. So I did all the rest of the white and the windows and the door and the pumpkins. And then I came over here and I'm doing the side of the house and the horse and the pumpkins. I've done so much on this and I love it. It's a lot of fill-in and I love fill-in work. I know I'm in a minority on that. Call me crazy, but I love the fill-in work. I'm trying to get something to behind it so that it's like a little more stable. Isn't that so pretty? Sorry, there's hoop marks in it. 
um this is sorry i need to sneeze <coughs> oh it was a cough this is stitched on um i don't know what it is it's called golden needle and that is all the information i have on it um the tag just says golden needle so i don't know who the dyer is or anything else but i like it so that's where i am on that one i'm really having fun working on it um that has been like the vast majority of the last maybe two or three weeks that's what i've been working on so it's like where's my needle we're good i found it so i'm i'm hoping that can be a finish this year but we'll see because i still have other stuff to work on um so i guess that's a good segue into plans so i would like to keep working on the gather in i'm also hoping to maybe get caught up on my witchy way cell um i'm only technically like while well, i'm still on july but September hasn't come out yet, so if I can finish it in like the next week or so, I could be caught up. And it shouldn't be that hard. But I would also like to work on Autumn Town. Um, I have at least a couple more Halloween fall cross stitches that I would like to pull out that I haven't, haven't worked on yet this year. Um, Halloween at Hot Run Hollow I'm working on and the Halloween sampler from Teresa Kogut, her book, Hello Halloween, the big sampler in that I started a couple years ago and it's not done yet. So I want to pull both of those out too. Um, oh, I do have a, some haul. Um, let me grab it. It's not, <laughs> it's not all my haul because it's been like five months. So um, some of the fabrics I bought have been put away. Some of them I think I put in, in my bag of haul. <laughs> but I, I like, I try to contain it all until my next video. Um, and I don't think some of it made it in. And also like if I get floss, I'm in a couple of floss clubs and most of that floss I just put away and possibly some patterns too. I don't know. Um, we'll just jump right in. I got two fabrics, two other fabrics from Vintage Needle Arts besides the one that I used on my Carolyn Manning. There's, I should have taken them out of the paper because they're super crinkly. So I'm just going to show them in the paper. This one is an 18 count Ada. It's in Mulberry and I actually have this plan for another Carolyn Manning. Um, when I was in my I want to start everything phase, I picked out a few of her patterns and couldn't decide which one to start. Um, and actually, the only reason I started Deep Ocean over any of the other ones was because I was going on a cruise. And I was like, oh, Deep Ocean, we'll do that because it fits like a theme. And then I hardly worked on it on the cruise, so whatever. Um, and then, so yeah. This is for another Carolyn Manning. And then I also have this really pretty 40 count uh, linen in turquoise blue. I have plans for this for a long dog. Just one of the small ones. It's just a little one um, that I will start sometime. So let's see. I don't have a ton of, um, I don't have a ton of new patterns. I kind of have been holding off a little bit. I'm trying to remember. Okay. Oh, maybe it's in here. Oh, it is. Okay. Um, I am on a blueberry ridge kick apparently because I bought four of their patterns. Not all at once. This is in like three separate shopping trips, but I got this one, All Hallows Eve. And then I got her House on Strawberry Hill and House on Pear Hill and House on Blueberry Hill. This was actually the first one I bought. This is a silly reason for buying something. It's cute. That's not a silly reason. Um, but it totally reminds me. 
of, um, I feel like this is the house Blueberry Muffin would live in on the Strawberry Shortcake cartoon. She doesn't, she lives in a giant muffin because her name is Blueberry Muffin. Um, but I feel like she would live here. <laughs> is that silly? That was my favorite show when I was a kid. I had all the dolls and accessories and I still have them. So my kids played with them a little bit when they were little and they're probably collector's items now. Anyway, I want to start Blueberry Hill. That'll be the first one. I have the fabric picked out. I have all of the floss for it, um, but it probably won't happen until next year. But then I have three, two others waiting to go. She also has House on Kiwi Hill, which is super cute, but I don't have that one yet. Ooh. There was just a noise over here. Something must have fallen down. Anyway, um, so there's those. And then I've got the Artsy Housewives Pretty Bird. I love this one. I love her patterns. She does the cutest things. So I got that one on a trip to Stitcher's Paradise. Oh, I'm trying to remember if I talked about this. I had a couple friends come and visit me. I don't think... I don't think I talked about it. So my friend Emmy uh, from Mission Stitch came down for a visit with our friend Ray, who does not have a floss tube, but she does have an Instagram. It is, um, I think it's Ray Stitching Sunshine. I'm trying to remember which way it goes. Ray Stitching Sunshine on Instagram. Um, they came down for a visit. We went to, um, there was a new cross stitch store. It's cross stitch and quilting opening in Boulder City. I think it opened April 30th, which was the day I posted my video. So I was like, did I talk about this in my video? But I don't think I did. If I did, just listen again. <laughs> anyway, um, I think that's where I got House on Blueberry Hill. But I also got some of the animal crackers. They're so cute and I think there's even more of them now oh anyway these are all from Silver State Stitch Shop which is the new cross stitch store in Boulder City um, and then we also went to Stitcher's Paradise which is here in Las Vegas I think that's where I got this one. Oh, and I got this at the Silver State Stitch Shop I love those funky chickens. And, okay, this is the funniest story. We were at Stitcher's Paradise, and they have just a little cart that's like clearance things. Um, a lot of them are older patterns that, um, some of them are kind of dated, like you can tell they're from like the 90s, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> um, they're just older patterns or I don't know, but I flip through every time I'm there um, just to see there's, I've gotten a couple things, but not always, but they had this pattern there that I was just kind of interested in. It's called Peace and it's the, it's from a Stitcher's Hands. So can't see it really well. Um, but we were just, I was, I was talking to Emmy about it. We were looking at it in the store. This is one of those that has the actual like photo paper picture on it. We were debating if some of these stitches are cross stitches or if there's some other specialty stitches in it. Couldn't really tell from the picture. It didn't say on the back of the pattern. Um, so I just got it. It was, it was like 10 bucks maybe. And I thought, oh, it'll just be interesting to do. And I got home and I pulled it out and I was like, man, this is a lot of pages in this pattern. There's like 30 pages and you can't really see the pattern, but it's tiny. Like this is a tiny grid. <laughs> Emmy and I were looking at this and Ray and we were like, how big is this pattern? And I looked at it. 
the font is kind of hard to read, so I didn't catch it in the store. But this pattern is, oh my gosh, this font, hang on. Got to get my numbers right here. Uh, 578 wide, the short way, by 941. Like 941. It's insanely big. It is huge, huge, huge pattern. Um, and the part that we were not sure if it was specialty stitches or cross stitch, it is all cross stitch. So 941 long. So a part of me is like, well, I am never going to do this because it's ginormous. And then there's like a part of me that goes, okay, now I, I kind of want to do this. Like this is, this would look so cool finished. It would be, it's like a tablecloth, <laughs> so big, but I kind of want to do it if I can find fabric big enough. Because even if I did it on um, like a 40 count, I don't know, I'm not going to math right now. Too much math. It's huge is all I'm saying. Um, and if I started it, it would be like a lifetime project. It would take forever, but I kind of want to start it. So we'll see what happens. Maybe one of these days I'll be like, look what I finally started. My ginormous piece. This is like the, um, the definition of a BAP. It came with a little pattern that, or a little picture that shows a piece of it up close. It's very pretty. The colors are pretty. It calls for swat all G. Oh, Verisua. Yeah. But it has a DMC conversion, which I would probably do because I cannot imagine how much silk it would take to do this. It would probably cost an arm and a leg. Anyway, that's my <laughs> fun story about that. Um, I bought two, nope, I bought three long dogs. I have not done a long dog that's got multiple colors in it, other than like I'm doing Saga in multiple colors, but it's charted as like a single color. And I have not done one yet that is charted in, act like it actually lists the colors to do in it. So I wanted to try that, so I bought two of them. <laughs> oh, that's Opus Magnuson, and this is the Siege of Bunny Castle. And then I also got two men's Morris because I like it. And I bought some floss. I hope it says, cause I don't remember where I got it. Oh yes, there is stitching corner. It's a, a really pretty um, collection of floss. I don't have a specific purpose for these. I just thought they were very pretty. I wanted to get them for something. So, and then she even sent a bon bonus floss in it for me. So they're really lovely. I love those colors. Uh, and that's Vera's Stitching Corner. And, um, oh, and I bought, oh, I'm so excited about this because I've been trying to find it for a while and I finally found it. This is the Art of William Morris in cross stitch. Oof, there's a glare on it. Um, so William Morris was a designer. I think he lived in like the early 1900s. Could be wrong. Oh, he was born in 1834. It's a little bit off there. Anyway, um, I love his designs. So some of them we've probably seen before. They're in rugs and stuff. The Strawberry Thief, I think, is one of his more famous designs. So, he's got the bird pillows. There's the Strawberry Thief and Woodpecker. And I think the other one's just called Bird. Yeah. And I'm just going to show you some of the things in here that I love. So, settle in. Um, trying to find, oh, 
I do like this one a lot. It's for a footstool, but you can do it as any number of things. It's called the Pimpernel footstool. And um, these are little like lids for bowls. I can't see if I'm showing these. <laughs> I hope they're in frame. Um, but these, if I can find them, this is what I really want to do. The tapestry pictures. These are so beautiful. Just simple and I just think they're stunning. Um, they're not, I think there's like seven colors in each one. Yeah, so, and then also it kind of goes with them. They have the orange tree bell pole that I think is so beautiful. So basically I want to stitch like everything in the book. For a rabbit picture. I love them all. So I was really excited to find a copy of this. Um, I think I got it on Thrift Books, which is one of my favorite websites. I spend way too much money on thrift books, but I would be spending a lot more if I was just buying the books new. So it's like a huge used bookstore online. Um, but this has been on my watch list on thrift books for quite a while and a copy of it finally popped up. And it was like 15 bucks, maybe, maybe even less. So I was very excited to find that. Um, and I think that is all my haul which is good because I am running out of room on my desk for anything else. So uh, I told you about plans. I'm going to stitch all the fall stuff. I'm like trying to channel my inner fall because it's so hot outside and I am ready for sweatshirts and crunchy leaves and hot cocoa. So um, I just have to make my own fall inside. Um, We also had our AC in our upstairs go out a couple weeks ago. Um, it probably took, it took like a week and a half to get fixed. Um, fortunately, we have a different AC for our main floor. So we just spent like all our time on the main floor and would just come upstairs to bed and sleep at night. And ha we all had it like our ceiling fans going full blast, but it got fixed a couple days ago. Um, so we're good now. We are cool in the house. So um, anyway, stitching all the fall things. I hope you are all doing well. Um, thank you for sticking around with me. We're almost an hour in. So thanks for sticking around and for joining with me today. And um, I will hopefully be back in less than four months. So we'll talk to you all later. Bye.